this particular sin has sin, will sin, and continues to send people to hell. That is the sin of idolizing, of, of having an idol. If you want to trigger a Pentecostal charismatic, just disagree with them on tongues. If you want to send them into a fervor, into an uproar, speak negatively about tongues or disagree with their take on tongues. Now, before I get to there, let me just say this up front and guys can get upset with me, but I challenge you to prove me wrong or prove yourself right. The typical Pentecostal charismatic does not value doctrine as much as, at least to the degree, as much as he desires to experience what he believes is a move of God. Let me say that again. If these people believe that there's a such thing as a move of God, which there is, they would much rather see a move of God than stand on sound doctrine. So oftentimes you see them force or manufacture a move of God, a move of the spirit. And what's interesting is it looks just like the way pagans do when they do the exact same things. For example, if it's a true Christian spiritual experience, uh, it should not look like a pagan a pagan spiritual experience. Christians being slain in the spirit looks just like Muslims or Hindus being slain in the spirit. That should not be. False healings and prophecies uh, look like that of occult religions. The same that we see in false preachers, false teachers, these false healings and false prophecies look just like occult members. Uh, also, today's Christian tongues look and sound just like that of other religions' tongues. Matter of fact, even when you think about it, you see people who never spoken tongues who faked it or tongues from known heretics and they sound just like the tongues that we see today that shouldn't be an actual true move of the spirit is identifiable to even the non-believers as well as the believers alike go to the scriptures we don't have one example of some time any time where the bible uh, shows the lord moves the spirit of the lord moves and everyone didn't know it everyone that was around everyone always knew it so christians what they ought to do and not all, but unfortunately, many, maybe even most, charismatics, Pentecostal, putting you all in the same boat, uh, do not seem to value the word of God, at least as much as you value everything else that seems to relate to the move of the spirit. You much rather do so. You much rather point to what you think is the move of the spirit. And then when someone actually uses the scriptures, what do you do? You want to um, trash them. You want to tear them down and say things like such as, they don't have the spirit. They don't know the Lord. Matter of fact, in this very same video that uh, Abednego Lufa, as he is uh, trying to counter what I'm saying and go back to the other very previously, uh, he does not. As a matter of fact, he actually agrees with me. But then go to the comment section and look at what people are saying. It's similar. All it every every time you see someone who disagrees with what I'm saying with tongues, it's the same tried and true, ridiculous, childish responses. For example. Corey does not understand the Holy Spirit. Corey knows the Bible, and I'm sure he, he's read 1 Corinthians 14. He has an intellectual understanding of the scripture, but not a spiritual revelation of it. I don't follow Corey, but he comes up in my feet a lot. He's somewhat intellectual, but definitely not spiritual or half revelation of scripture. I guess he's one of those, if it's not in the Bible, it doesn't exist kind of people. I had to stop following Corey. He won't even consider the possibility that he does not have revelation on this topic. Corey Minor knows Bible so well, but when it comes to spiritual things, he lacks discernment. Uh, Corey is annoying. And the point is, you don't give actual biblical references. What do most Pentecostal charismatics do? Not all, not all. Uh, but I mean this to be biting and stinging. I want them to understand you tend not to go with the text. It is not enough for you to try to impugn someone's spiritual walk because they don't what speak in tongues. Christians should value the word of God above everything else. Hermeneutics next to Jesus tend to take a backseat when it comes to Pentecostal and charismatics. Charismatics, as a matter of fact, they themselves will say the same thing, many of them. Context matters so long as it proves their point. They're okay with context if it proves their point, but if it doesn't, well, then they leave context. So if the Greek proves their point, they're fine with that. If it doesn't, then the person using Greek isn't isn't spiritual uh, or doesn't know the Holy Spirit and is only intellectual. Well, I think that's false to say that I don't know the Spirit or the things of the Spirit. So here's my question. When you call me carnal or don't know the Spirit, how am I carnal? How do you know if someone is not of the Spirit because they don't speak in tongues? Uh, what do people who are led by the spirit do? How do you, what does it look like a person who's led by the spirit? Does a person, if a person has the Holy Spirit, uh, loves the Lord, has encountered the, uh, the Holy Spirit, the power of the spirit, 
Do they read the Bible? Check. Do they pray? Well, check. I pray. Do they praise God? Check. I pray. Do they intercede for others? Check. I do that. Do they give help or help to others? Check. I do that. Do they overcome the world? Yep. Do they do they teach all those things? Check, 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 and check. So how am I not led by the Spirit? Show the fruit or results of a person having the Spirit. Do I have those things? And if you're going to say no, well, then prove it. Don't come back and tell, tell someone because they disagree with you on tongues, the word that triggers you. More than, than the Trinity triggers non-Christians, uh, this for some reason wants to, it just triggers you, puts you in an uproar and a fervor. Why? There's a reason why. And the reason for many people, specifically those who don't have a firm grasp on the text, is because the only way that you validate yourself is by your apparent tongues. You want people to just like when Paul is saying to them in 1 Corinthians 12 and 14, you want people to validate you and pat you on the back and say, attaboy, because they think or you want them to think that you're spiritual. You want to be seen as something. And so you validate yourself by the tongues. So you get angry because you feel as though you've been attacked personally because I disagree with your understanding of tongues. You think I'm disagreeing with you as a person, as a Christian. I'm not. I just disagree with your interpretation. I'm not saying you're not saved, but you turn around and say that I don't have the spirit, which means I'm not saved. So if anyone wants to ever trigger Pentecostal charismatic, talk about tongues. Tongues for many have become an idol. They have to have tongues. You'll hear this ridiculous statement that have you been baptized with the Holy Spirit with the experience of speaking in tongues? Tell that person, sit down and read the Bible. That person needs to, in Jesus' name, shut up. That person doesn't know the Bible. We don't have that example. Or were there people who were saved and then began speaking in tongues? Yes. Why? Ask them that. They could not articulate that. Well, here's the reason why. So that, so that the Jews and the church would know that not just the Jews have the Holy Spirit, but also the um, Samaritans have the Holy Spirit, also the Gentiles, and then John's uh, disciples also coming on. But most times that we see someone coming to Christ in the Bible, being saved, there are no tongues. So stop that. That's a foolish notion. Stop exceeding the text. The text says, do not exceed what is written. For some of you guys, though, your walk is only tongues. That's all you stick up for. Uh, not me. I feel like my walk is far more than anything. It's far more than Hebrew or Greek or ex It's far more than that. So my question to those who feel that uh, as though me and others like me aren't filled with the spirit is this. Here's my question. Since you say that people like me or particularly me don't have the spirit, haven't encountered the spirit, don't have a relationship with the spirit. Here's my question. Who brought me out of the many trials that I've mentioned? All of the trials, whether they were self-inflicted, what have you, who brought me out of those? The trials that many of you I'm being blunt here. Many of you uh, would have and still have struggled with and cry about and need others to walk you through. Who brought me out of those things that many of you people could not stand to? Who brought me out of those things that many people could not deal with or stand? Who brought me out of those things since I have not had a relationship with the Holy Spirit? Uh, who kept me with full of joy and faith going through those things. Who brought me through all of those trials without me losing faith and joy since I have not had an experience with the Holy Spirit? The death threats and the literal attempts on me and my family's life. Who brought me through that since I had not had an experience or encounter with the Holy Spirit? Who grew my understanding and my faith while in the lowest depths of a prison? Who did that? Who do I give glory and credit to for my testimony? Do I give it to me? Do I give it to the Greek, to the Hebrew? To the to, No, I give it to the Lord without fail. And you say, I don't have the spirit or know the spirit. Apparently, the spirit knows me. If you think I don't know the spirit, apparently the spirit knows me. You say unbiblical statements such as uh, he knows the Bible, but since we disagree with him on tongues, he doesn't know the spirit. It's a foolish, childish statement by many people, not all, but by many. Many of the very people who are critical, they themselves don't know the word, yet want us to believe that they are led by the Spirit. Make that make sense. You are ignorant of the word. You are needing to be taught of the word, but you are so led by the Spirit uh, to where you can tell someone else they aren't, but you make basic mistakes when it comes to doctrine. Help someone like me who doesn't know the Spirit like you do. Help someone like me. Help it. Help it make sense. 
the very spirit that many of you people claim to be led by, you cannot articulate nor defend it with the scriptures. But you come back and lambast someone for, for disagreeing with you all because of tongues. So I'm the culprit. We're the culprit for literally going to the text to make our point. And our problem is we don't we disagree. And so therefore, something is wrong with us. The Bible says that all scripture is inspired by God and profitable for teaching, for reproof, for correction, for training in righteousness, so that the man or woman of God may be adequate, equipped for every good work. But you say don't rely too much on the word of God, the very words that was given to us by the spirit. So help me understand this. You want me to rely on the spirit as you see it, but don't rely on the words that the spirit gave as we all see it. Help me understand that. Maybe the issue is you idolize that gift of tongue so much so that that's what you value more than the word of God. If that's the case, you're probably not saved.